What's going on? We back. Goodfellas Sports TV. One more video for the night. Plan on this one being the last of the lost. And um, it's your boy CJ Goodfella. And apparently, Eddie Hearn is very, very desperate to get a big show on his own. I feel that he's been pressed by CEOs uh, Rushton and Skipper to produce. And he's not producing the type of fighters that they want. He took the wrong approach. Came over here and tried to, you know, stomp and beat his chest. And say, I got a billion dollars. What you want to do? You know, issue a challenge challenge to fellow promoters, Bob Aram, Al Heyman, and also Golden Boy Oscar De La Hoya, Richard Schaefer, Ring Star Sports, and a host of others. And obviously, um, Oscar De La Hoya jumped over to the zone and supposed to be, you know, working with Eddie, um, pretty much trying to steal his spot. And, you know, now, you know, now the promoters are not willing to lend his fighters, lend fighters to him and the other fighter and the free free agent promotional fighters and PVC ain't taking the bait and ain't taking his money. So right now he's getting very desperate. He's getting very angry. He's getting irate. Um, and it's to the point where he's angry. He's begging guys and then he's turning around and saying, F him. I don't understand it. You got to be stupid not to take this money. He don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? And it's to the point where now he's trying to make Conor McGregor and Paula Montanashi boxing fight. You know, he's telling Paulie that he's trying to reach out to Conor McGregor team to see if there's any interest in that fight. And for Conor McGregor, he's, he, he, I mean, why would he rematch Paul and Molly Naji? You know, the money would have to be big and epic. You know what I'm saying? And if it make money, you know, if it make uh, dollars, it makes sense. Exactly. But he's living off the sparring, <laughs> you know, film that he beat Paulie on. So, you know, that's his leverage over Paulie. Paulie's still uh, scoring like a woman over that footage and over what actually happened. You know, it didn't look good. His face looked like a swelled up hot dog Oscar Mayer wiener sending, you know, boiling hot dog water. You know, nobody tell him to go over there and spar Conor McGregor. Then he tried to act like he was over there spying for Floyd Mayweather. No, he was over there getting toe up, you know, getting work. You're a retired boxer. You're not active. You know, you're not active. You said a lot of things about Conor McGregor. Then you went over there and didn't get paid. So you got whooped on. Or allegedly you got whooped on and then you didn't get paid. And that just shows you how desperate uh, Eddie Hearn is. He was so desperate, he was trying to get Chavez Jr. to fight Sergio Martinez in a rematch. November 17th in Texas, that turned out it didn't work out. Chavez Jr. is going to do another another show with Al Heyman, supposedly on the December 1st card with um, Wilder and Fury on a non-televised portion, I would guess. So he couldn't even get Chavez Jr., you know? To revitalize his own. Now he's trying to make an MMA boxing crossover with Paul Manaji Conor McGregor. Now I mean, I'm interested in seeing the fight. I'm very interested in seeing what actually happened in sparring. This is kind of a fight that I thought Conor McGregor might come back with, and it makes sense. Paul Manaji has been scoring. He's been angry, like he keep himself in de decent shape. It's a fight that I'm interested in, but I'm not interested in it being on the zone for ten dollars or whatever they they put in the price at. I shall not pay and watch the zone. Nor Eddie Hearn or Oscar De La Hoya and his racist promotional company is there as well. I understand Golden Boy signed the fighter today, John the Beast Wilson, heavyweight that mimics um, Mike Tyson style. Uh, one thing I got to say to that brother is, do you know who you signed with? Do you know about the racist emails? Do you care about the racist history they had and how they treat their fellow Mexican compadres like Abner Morris and how they're not nice guys? Or did you just care about just getting a professional contract? You have no self-worth or you just wasn't aware of the situation that I may ask. All right? But, hey, if, if this is what Eddie Hearn got to do to get a big show, do it. People don't see that he's reaching. He has no leverage. Even with all the money in the world, in the box world, he has no leverage. And it's pathetic to see somebody that feels entitled, that feels they got power, that feels they're in a position of power, be in a position of weakness. You know, you can't get any Bob Aaron fighters because they're all tied to promotional contracts. So, Al Heyman fighters are free. They're promotional free agents. They can easily cross the gun line and sign with you. If you're paying two or three times more than what they're getting paid, okay, then why they not coming? Why you get Mikey Garcia if you really offered him $40 million? Because your platform sucks. Seriously, your platform sucks. Your platform is for fighters that can't get on HBO, Showtime, ESPN. Rosado, he didn't wear himself out. Luis Arias and sparked that on HBO. Demetrius Andrade, 
They really didn't care about showing him. Okay? Anthony Joshua, he had a buzz on Showtime and HBO wanted him. Give you that. But other than that, who your platform for? Maurice Hooker? Nobody was showing Maurice Hooker fights. <laughs> His fight was on YouTube with, uh, with Terry Flanagan. So you all got television network rejects. Rejected. All your all your uh all your fighters were, were television rejects. I mean, Demetrius Andre had a three fight deal on HBO and he fought once. And they tried to get him to fight Yamaguchi Falcoa and he pulled out because it's an all golden boy card. I'm like, you're robbed. So everybody you got is a is a network television reject or, or that never has been. And now you desperate. Now you so desperate you try to go get Chavez Jr. out the depths of of <laughs> of nothing. Now you desperate you trying to dig up a part of Mananaji in a Conor McGregor fight. Which is interesting. I'm interested in that fight. I'm just not interested in it on your platform. I'm not a fan of, of streaming a fight on my internet through my TV or through my phone. When I can get the same quality from flashing it from my phone to my Chromecast or flashing it to my smart TV. I'm not interested in that. You figure deal me? But if he did get it, it'll be a good win for him. But the thing about it is you're not locked into a commitment with the zone. You're paying $10, then I can cancel it and rejoin for the fight that I want. So how can you retain subscribers? It's a problem. You have to pay Dana White a chunk of money, a big chunk of money, to just have Conor McGregor come to the zone of fight party. You got to give him some money in. And that's what it is. So all the money, your budget is going to be spent overpaying for big fights. Overpaying promoters to have their fighters come fight on your platform. Overpaying Paul and Malinaji to bring, to, to go crossover from Showtime. Stop calling fights for a minute. Come fight and train and take this fight. And then, if you overspend, okay, if you overspend, guess what? It don't even mean you're going to retain subscribers. People might pay $10 for the fight and cancel the zone the very next day. It's just a lot of a lot of holes through this through this the zone thing. There's plenty of holes. He has to worry about retaining subscribers. You have to continue to put on good shows week after week, month after month, year after year. You have to string weeks together, events together, months together, years together. You have to grandfather some of these people in. So if you do go over the price, you gotta People that have been rocking with you for so long, you got to make them, you know, keep their nine ninety nine, even if you move up to twenty dollars. This dude is so desperate that he's trying to go get Paul and and Conor McGregor, which ain't a bad idea. But if he straight, what if he swing out on this one? Who else is he gonna get to the zone? He's gonna get, get kicked off the zone very, very soon. The numbers are pathetic. John Skipper and whatever Rushton is losing money at a fast pace. Plenty of money. You, I mean, your next card is next Saturday in Kansas, bro. In Kansas? No offense to Kansas. What last fighter fought in Kansas? You know, like the Ill endless individual in Nebraska. Like, you know, Crawford's so dope that people going to come see him in Nebraska. Dude ain't going to last too long. By the time next year, this time next year, I wouldn't be surprised if he was on the brink, on the brink of being canned or already canned from the zone. Now, Oscar De La Hoya is going to be next because he, he can't get nobody neither. You know, he's going to just keep Canelo over there. But other than that, they gonna they end up going to bankrupt the zone. Watch. The zone going to crumble. The zone America going to be gone. You know, Canelo Alvarez is going to be a free agent again. Watch what I tell you. They're going to pull that whole thing. They're going to pull the whole plug on that thing. Watch what I tell you about a year or two from now. It's Goodfellas Sports uh, TV. Your boy CJ Goodfellas. Don't forget, we on Facebook and Twitter. Both links in the description. You can join our Facebook group. That's in the link as well. You can hit me up. DM me questions. You can add me on Twitter questions. Share news with me. Have video requests, personal questions, whatever it may be. You can email me the same. Business inquiries, sponsorships. Emails in the description. Uh, intro uh, instrumentals in the description as well. Salute, salute, salute. Also, if you want to make a donation to the channel, that link's in the description to the PayPal link. Salute. Uh, shout out to all the brothers and sisters supporting the channel. Subscribe. Share the videos. We gone.